Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Lore Reads. My name is Lore. This is my first video on this channel here. I can recognize that my channel name is so unique. Um, Lore Reads. I have a huge problem. And my problem is that my TBR is entirely too big, okay? I have over 20 books on my TBR and that might not seem like a lot to some people but for me personally it makes me feel stressed out it makes me feel like I need to go on a book buying ban immediately uh I just want to talk about all the books that are on that list in preparation for a series I want to do on this channel called I don't know what to call it like TBR to zero or something I don't know if y'all have any ideas on what to call a series in which you're just trying to get your TBR down to zero, then let me know in the comments below. So first and foremost, let's get into the books that I've already started or I'm a few pages in. That's already started. So first up we have Malice by John Gwyn. Gwyn? Gwyn? Sorry if I've mispronounced any names in this video. I don't mean to be disrespectful. Um, and... What I can say about this book so far is I'm 346 pages in, so I'm a little bit over halfway through. Uh, to me, so far, it's basically just been world building on world building on world building. Actually, if you have a little bit more detail on this, my boyfriend and I, about every two months, we do a thing called book swap and I make him read one of my favorite books and he makes me read one of his favorite books and this is one of his absolute favorite books and I'm getting nervous that I'm not gonna like it but I'm gonna give the last 300 pages a go and uh we'll see what happens okay <laughs> another book that I'm not in the middle of but I'm about let's see 62 pages into is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee um this is a story about different generations i'm about to get flamed bro let me read the back even though i'm 62 pages in anyway okay so this book is about this family from korea who then i believe moves to japan and they settle there down there in japan anyway i'm 62 pages into this we just gonna move on from that okay so i was super nervous filming this video and i just want to jump in and say while i'm editing that this book is actually super good and it's about uh different generations of a korean family who then move to japan and it's about everything they go through and deal with and it's actually really good and i apologize for how i struggled to describe it <laughs> while filming this video Okay, and I believe the last book that I'm in the middle of is Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. Bronte? Emily Bronte. And I think everyone knows what this book is about, so I'm not gonna go too much into it. But I'm on page 28, so I'm honestly not very far into this one. But so far I'm enjoying it. So let's go ahead and get into the manga, graphic novels, and comics section of my TBR. First and foremost, I just got a bunch of Tomb Raider comics. I don't know anything about comics. I don't know anything about the comic world. I don't know how comics work. I saw these at a secondhand store and I love Tomb Raider, so I got them. Uh... I recently, not recently, about a year ago, I beat all of the three latest video games for Tomb Raider. And now I'm obsessed and I can't wait to play them again at some point. But look at this cover. Stunning. Okay, stunning. So I have a lot of these to get through. Um, I guess I could count how many there are. I have 13 of these to get through, but I'm missing part one of a four part series within these again i don't know how comics work i'm just here for the the fun of it i guess i have frankenstein by junji ito junji ito ito again i apologize um frankenstein is one of my absolute favorite books i love it and i recently read uzumaki 
by Junji Ito and so I was like I need more of his art just in my life completely. I'm about 38 pages in. His art is just fantastic. I love it. I can't wait to just devour anything he's put out. It's gonna take me a while though because I'm really thinking about not buying anything until I complete what I already have. We'll see if I stick to that. We'll see. I don't know if y'all could tell by this whole shelf I have here, but I love Avatar. I've watched Avatar since I was a child. I've owned the series and, and Legend of Korra as well for years at, at this point. Um, all of the ones on the shelf I've completed, but I still have this much that I need to get through. And that would be, so we have Imbalance Part 1, 2, and 3. So I need to get through these. And then I need to finish Katara and the Pirates Silver. I think this might have come out recently. Not sure. And then I do have Turf Wars Part 1, 2, and 3 for Legend of Korra. So I'm really excited to get into those. Um, yeah, they're just fun. Let's get into the more of the novels that I have. Okay, so sitting on top, I have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I actually don't know what this is about, and I kind of want to keep it that way when I go into it because I don't know I just feel like I should and then this book I have been wanting to read for so long I don't know why I just haven't gotten to it yet and that is 100 years of solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez um I've heard literally nothing but fantastic things about this and I'm upset with myself that I've never read it and I own it so that just makes it worse you know something about me is I like to go into books a little bit blind I prefer it like that so I'm sorry if you guys are wanting a bit more information about these books I personally just like going into books with little to no information about it and so another book that I'm really wanting to wow did that make sense another book that i've really been wanting to get into is dominicana by angie cruz first off this cover and the other cover that they have for this book is gorgeous these colors chef's kiss right um again all i think i know about this is it's about a woman from the dominican republic who comes over to America and I believe she may or may not have moved with a, an abusive husband I'm not sure I could read the back of it but I like going in blind so I again I apologize so another book on my TBR that I'm just not excited for I'm, I don't feel like reading uh, is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass Moss I don't know uh look i know this series is beloved by many and i too have have read almost all of them the only other book in this series that i haven't read is tower of dawn and that's because i hate kale so i don't really want to read a book that's really focusing on his timeline um the the last three books so <clears throat> that I've read, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, and Empire of Storms. I had to push myself to get through them. I had to listen to the audio version on like three point speed just to get through those books. But it's like something in me is like you have read the whole entire series except for Tower of Dawn, but you've read the rest of the series. You own this. You might as well just get through it. So this TBR series that I'm planning on doing is a good time to force myself to read this. I'm just so excited, can't you tell? Then I have The Lacuna by Barbara Kings Sol King Solver. Barbara King Solver, Lacuna. I don't know anything about this book at all, except for that I think it takes place in Mexico. We have The People in the Trees by Hanya Yana Gihara. She wrote A Little Life, which I 
absolutely loved and it absolutely wrecked me. I honestly don't know if I recommend reading that book because of how messed up it is. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But this is her first novel I believe that she's ever written. The only thing that I hate about this absolutely stunning cover is the sides which have maggots on them or larvae or whatever this is. <laughs> Six me out. Nasty. This book technically is not my book. It belongs to my boyfriend, but I want to read it regardless. And that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Oh, technically this next book is also his as well, but if I read it before he reads it, I'm going to put it on my shelf. And that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is a fantasy book that I'm extremely excited about. I've heard nothing but good things. I, I want to hop on this this series train even though i believe this series has been out for a while now anyway if this book lets me down i don't know if there will be any hope but yes so this i'm so excited about oops looks like i forgot some that were that were in the manga section okay so i have arisa number four and arisa number six by nasumi ando nasumi ando uh i'm number five is coming in the mail so i i will have number five i honestly want to start rereading this series start at number one and then go all the way to number six stop there and let myself finish some other books <laughs> but I love this series. It's nothing super fantastic, nothing out of this world. Um, it's just fun. So essentially, I know about this series because I've read the first three. And what happens is there's these two twin sisters, but they don't live together. And one ends up being hospitalized. And the other one takes her place at her, at her school. And there's this weird guy called the King and he grants one wish to the students. Only one student gets chosen, only one wish is granted per week, but any wish that is chosen will come true. So say they wish their teacher disappears, the teacher will disappear. So it's kind of serious, kind of not. I like it. Check it out if you're into that stuff. The next one my boyfriend got me for Christmas because he knows I've been trying to get more into manga. And that is The Queen's Night by Kim Kang Wan. I don't know anything about this. The art on the cover is stunning. Um, here, it's the same picture but blown up. Love it. I'm excited to read this just off the sheer fact that this cover is so pretty. So the next book that I'm really interested in reading is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Um, this edition is gorgeous. Um, I think it's from Barnes & Noble. I think my boyfriend's family got it for me for my birthday. And the edges are silver. It's stunning. I'm not, like, super into poetry at the moment. Oof, this book's heavy. Uh, so I do just want to read The Bell Jar. And at some point in my life, I'll start reading the collected poems. But as of right now, like, I don't consider that as part of my TBR. Just because it's, like, half of this is just poetry. And I'm not, like, a poetry type of person. Maybe one day. Maybe one day I will be. But as of right now, I don't think so. The next book on this list is Vita Nostra by Mariana and Sergei Dai Oof. Dianchenko. <sighs> I apologize for that. I'm so sorry. Uh this is translated work. I'm assuming from Russian. I'm assuming. Gosh. Again, I don't know a thing about this. I I think it gives me like dark academia vibes. Could be totally and completely off. Um, we're gonna see what this book's about when I read it. Okay, another book that my boyfriend's family got me 
is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Yet again, I do not know a thing about this book, so that's cool. Okay, and so I believe, I believe that covers all of the fiction books that I have. The rest of my, of the rest of these books are all nonfiction, so if that's like not your thing, totally understand. First, I have this book called *The Incredible Incas and Their Timeless Land* by Lauren McIntry. McIntry. Anyway, I think this book is from the '70s. I found it at a thrift store. I'm super into Latin American history. I love the cover and the dust jacket's pretty. The end pages are gorgeous, love that. I just wanna know more. I just wanna learn as much as I can. I'm a history major in university right now. I'm going into my senior year, so I have a lot of learning to get done in the next year. Um, kinda nervous, but I know I can do it. Well, my senior thesis is gonna be about the Roanoke colony. So I have to read a lot of stuff to be able to complete that senior thesis and two novels that I have already half read but really need to just dig deeper into the material is The Lost Colony by Scott Dawson. This book's actually super fun. He gets really into the archaeology and then the other one I have is Roanoke The Abandoned Colony by Karen Ordahl Cooperman and then next I have another history based book and it's Lies My Teacher Told Me, Everything Your American History Textbook Got Wrong by James W. Lowen. I've read, I think I'd say like four or five chapters of this, not in order, just randomly assigned chapters I had for a class. So one of my favorite wars to study in history is the American Revolutionary War. So when I saw this book, the British Are Coming by Rick Atkinson. For Christmas, my boyfriend's family got me The Last Kings of Shanghai, The Rival Jewish Dynasties That Helped Create Modern China by Jonathan Kaufman. I am so excited for this book. I know absolutely nothing about Shanghai. I would have never assumed that Jewish dynasties helped build Shanghai, so I just want to I want to get to this book as soon as possible, honestly. Okay, we're getting into the last stack here. And let me just tell y'all, my legs hurt from sitting on the floor. So I have this book called Memory and Education by Robert Z. Zen? Zen? And Michael K. Gardner. I had to read this for one of my classes. Kind of skimmed it, turned the paper in. I know it has really good information and it's so small that I feel like 30 bucks for not reading it is wasteful. So I'm definitely going to read this and get any and all information I can out of it. I'm not wasting my $30. <laughs> Actually, I forgot that I was halfway, no, definitely not halfway through. I forgot I was a chapter into 1491 New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus by Charles C. Mann. That's like one of my favorite parts of history to study. I know a lot about the Maya and not a lot about anyone else. So I need to, I need to finish this. I'm reading the appendix as I'm reading the book. So I'm like making my way in the book like this, if that makes sense. Oh my gosh, another book that I forgot I was in the middle of. Um, A Brief History of Mexico by Lynn V. Foster. Okay, this is the fourth edition. I'm actually halfway through. I'm 122 pages into this book. It's super small. It's really easy to read and it's just giving me a lot of good information. Okay, and another book I was supposed to read for class that I skimmed. Do we see a pattern here? Okay, I work 40 hours a week and I'm taking five classes at university so skimming is my best friend <laughs> okay so this book is called a history teaching toolbox by russell tar and i do want to teach history so 
I know for a fact that this book will be helpful. I just got to get myself to actually read it. And there's so many good ideas of how to engage students um, in history learning. I really just, I know this book is going to be fantastic. I just got to give it a go. <laughs> I'm halfway through this book as well, which is, why won't you just tell us the answer? Teaching Historical Thinking in Grades 7 through 12 by Bruce A. Lesh. Leash. Less. Anyway, I am literally halfway through. I'm on chapter 5, Revolution in the Air, page 107. Um, I had to, I had to do a book discussion over this book. Realized I was only halfway through the book when it was my term my turn to present to the class uh my thoughts so i quickly just tabbed everything i thought that was interesting in the first half of the book and i made that information stretch for my whole presentation love that and so this book i think matches the inca book and it's the mysterious maya i don't know i don't know how i feel about the title of this and i but and it was from the 70s but regardless look at this that is so pretty um and look at this end page that is who who wouldn't look at this and be like i need to i need to know more like i gotta know more about this i gotta know where this comes from what this is what this means that's at least that's what i think when i look at stuff like that um i had a 12 page research paper due on the maya last semester and I still feel like there's so much more I need to learn about them. So I'm excited to get into this book. Oh, I forgot to say who it was by. Oh, by George E. Stort and Jean S. Stort. Oh, I think they're a couple. I think they're married. I remember reading that. Oh, look, this is them. Cool. Wonder what they're up to or if they're dead. Okay. This book is huge. Okay, it was $12.00 from Barnes and Noble so I bought it on a whim and now I I really need to read it it's the illustrated encyclopedia of Aztec and Maya and then a matching one that I got is the encyclopedia of ancient Egypt I don't know anything about Egyptian history other than the basics uh, and this is by Helen Strudwick Strudwick uh, what can I say I just want to know. I want to know. I want to know more. And finally, y'all, we're at the last book on my TBR. Ooh. And that is Archaeology, Discovering the World's Secrets. And let me see who this is written by. By Gaynor Altoni. Okay. So those... Those are all the books on my TBR. I'm going to make a TBR to zero or something like that. Please put any name suggestions down in the comments below for that series. So if you're interested in people getting their TBR down to zero, stay tuned because I will be doing that series on this channel. So thanks.